Gateway Server on a Windows machine. So if you're not running Windows, uh, move on to the next video or the one after that where I show you how to do the same thing but from Mac or a Linux machine. But uh, if you're using Windows, you're in the right place, so let's uh, continue. So the first thing we want to do is uh, go to the website dev.mysql.com. Dev. Once we get there, we're going to click on MySQL Downloads. Then we want to come over here and click on MySQL on Windows. And then we want to click on MySQL Installer. Now it's giving you the option here that if you've got an online connection while running the MySQL Installer to choose a version, the web version, which is much smaller, or if you don't have an online connection to use the installer, which is the full product. I suggest you just uh, grab the full product because it makes it a little bit easier and uh, you can just install it. Uh, but depending on uh, which option you want to choose, select that. But in my case, I'm going to choose the second one. I'm just going to start that, then I'm just going to talk about uh, something else. And by the way, asking Dib whether, whether we want to set up an Oracle web account because Oracle now own my, the MySQL product or login. We're going to click on no thanks, just start my download. So I'll just start that uh, downloading, wait till it starts. And then I'm going to actually go back a few times. So I just want to show you, after I click on the MySQL installer, option here, it actually said MySQL installer is 32-bit, but will install both 32 and 64-bit binaries. And in a minute, I'm going to show you uh, when we go through the installation process, how to select that. So what you will need to know is uh, whether your Windows machine is running a 32 or 64-bit version of Windows. And uh, you can generally find that in about in the uh, control panel to see whether which version you're actually running. So let's quickly do that while we're waiting for this to download. So I'm going to go into control panel and you can normally go into the about by searching for about and ordinarily, depending on your version of Windows, it'll tell you system type 64-bit operating system. So we're not so much concerned about the processor because it is possible to have a 32-bit version of Windows running the operating system with a 64-bit version. Uh, with a 64-bit processor. So we actually want to know this bit here, the 64-bit operating system. So you'll need to know whether you're running the 32 or 64-bit version. So you saw how I checked that information on Windows 10. If you're running an old version of Windows, you can generally find that in the system part of control panel. There'll be a screen similar to this where you can find out which uh, version of uh, Windows you're running, a 32 or a 64-bit edition. And again, we'll need that when we get to the stage of uh, installing MySQL. All right, so I'm going to pause the video now and we'll come back once it's fully downloaded and continue the installation. Okay, so we're back and we can see that the installation has completed. So now we need to open the file that we've downloaded. So I'm just going to select open here. Obviously, you'll never get to the folder if your browser doesn't give you the option to open it from there like I've just done. And that's going to start the installer. So I'll give that a moment. Click on yes if it pops up to say, to say that uh, to allow this app to make changes to your uh, machine. The installation will then proceed. It may pop up again and ask you to allow this app to make changes. In my case, it did pop up that twice. And then eventually you'll get to the license agreement. So we want to click on I accept the license terms and click on next. And now we get this option where we can choose the setup type. Now there are various uh, radio buttons here to the left and to the right it gives you a description of uh, what it's actually going to install. So you can see the first option uh, installs is MySQL Server and the tools required for application development. We've got a server only. It does just that, it installs only the SQL Server. We've got a client option, we've got a full option, but the option we're going to select is the custom option, so that we're installing only the things that we need for this course. So I'm going to click on custom, and then I'm going to click on next. Once we've done that, we get this screen here where you can see to the left hand side there's a list of available products, and the right hand side shows a list of the products that are to be installed. Currently that's empty because we haven't selected anything yet. So I'm going to come over here first and uh, click on the plus for to the left of MySQL servers and keep clicking on the plus, click it on again, and eventually we get the option. And uh, I mentioned uh, on the uh, previous screen that uh, the installer will install both the 32 and 64-bit versions. In fact, you can see there that it does say that. So you can see that both versions are available. So if I go back to MySQL again, you want to install only the version that's appropriate for your operating system. And again, if you recall, we went through to determine which uh, type of operating system, whether it's a 62 or a 34-bit version for your computer. 
In my case, mine is 64 bit, so I'm going to select the X64 and click on the arrow to move it across to the right hand side. So that's now going to be installed. The next thing we want to do is come over here to Applications, click on the plus again. We want to select MySQL Workbench, click on the plus, and then click on the plus again to open the version. And uh, we can see there that uh, there's also a 64 bit and a 32 bit version, so I'm going to select the 64 bit again and move that over. Now, by the way, the version numbers may change depending on when you're watching this video. It might be a later version, but the principle is still the same. Just select the relevant version and uh, select the 64-bit the, uh, or 32-bit version. All right, so at this point now we've selected the only two products we need. So I'm going to uh, click on Next, and I'm going to click on Execute. And that's going to start the installation of both those products onto this computer. And once that's finished, uh, we need to go through a configuration step to set up usernames and so on and so forth. So I'll pause the video, we'll come back once this is complete. Okay, so it's now finished installation, and we're gonna click on Next. Then next, uh, it's telling us that it needs to go through and configure the product. So I'm gonna click on Next, and that uh, will bring up the uh, configuration options. And we've got a configuration type here where we can select various different options, but we're going to leave the default of development machine since that's what exactly what we're doing here. We're using it as developers. Now in terms of the uh, port, I'm going to leave it on the default number. It needs to be a unique port number that's not used anywhere else. Uh, or it's not used for another application on this uh, computer. So 3306 will be fine for my computer. So normally that will work for your computer as well. The rest of the defaults are okay. You don't need to change anything else there. Click on next. Next it's asking is for what the root password is. Now the root account is created automatically by MySQL and is a logon that uh, is the most powerful user in the system and uh, generally speaking it's good to use that uh, username and password very sparingly when you, you know, when you really need to do some sort of super administrative tasks. So what we're going to do is assign a password for it which we need to do but then we're going to create a new user that we're going to be using for our day-to-day -day use of MySQL. So you want to enter a password that uh, is hard to guess and is quite secure. So I'm going to put in a password. And it tells me there that the strength is medium. So you might want to uh, work on that and create a longer password so it is very secure and a, a strong password. But uh, medium is probably a reasonable uh, choice there. Right, so the next thing we need to do is click on Add User. We're going to create a user, as I mentioned, that uh, we're going to be using to uh, use in this course. So type in the name of the uh, user. I'm going to call this one Dev User. But you can call it to literally whatever you like. In terms of the host, I'm going to change that to localhost, importantly. So that ensures that uh, it'll only, it can only be used locally, which is appropriate. We only want to be using this uh, username locally. We don't want access uh, from any external source. We're going to leave the role as DB Admin, and that's generally the default. There's other options you can choose here, but I'm not going to change any of that. I'm going to leave it on Admin for now. And we also need to enter a password for this. I do suggest you make it different to the root user, and we'll need to remember that because we are going to be using that in this course. So I'm going to enter it. In this case, you can see I've got a strong password. So probably I should have done that the other way around and uh, made the root password the really strong one. But in any event, you can change that later if need be. But uh, I'm going to accept that as the default. And you can see down the bottom now that uh, we've got a MySQL username set up as well. So now we're done with that, we can click on Next. And uh, it's now wanting to know uh, some configuration and uh, whether we want to set this up as a service to run on Windows. So we're going to accept all the defaults to that and click on Next. Now the uh, plugins and extensions uh, screen has popped up as you can see here. And this is related to a NoSQL based development which we're not working and using in this course. So we're going to accept all the defaults and click on Next. And then we're going to click on Execute. And it's going to start the process of configuring MySQL on this computer. So I'll pause now. Well actually I was going to pause but you can see it's already finished so it's fairly quick. So I'm going to click on Finish now. Click on Next. And you can see we're now done. And leave the checkbox on Start MySQL Workbench after setup. And that's because we want to run that just to confirm the installation's okay. So click on Finish. I'm going to close the browser down. Now what we want to do is before we actually uh, check that, is we want to go into Services on this computer just to make sure the service has been installed successfully. So I'm going to click on the Start button and click on Settings. 
and I'm going to just do a search for services. So just go to where you'd normally configure services. Now, sometimes, depending on the version of Windows, to get to where you've got to, you might actually have to do it a different way. You might have to go into Control Panel, Administrative Tools, and click Services. But in any event, you want to get there. And once you've done that, you want to scroll on down here until we get to MySQL, and it's usually in alphabetical order. And there's MySQL. And you can see in this case, it's actually running automatic. So that's a good sign. The fact that it's running tells us that uh, the MySQL service has been successfully installed and it's actually running. And what I'll do now, just quickly show you, you can actually override this. If uh, your computer is low on resources, you haven't got a lot of memory, you can change this. So instead of it starting automatically every time your computer starts, you can right click that and go into properties. And you could, uh, for example, make that manual and click on OK. And what that would mean is that uh, it won't start automatically each time you turn your computer on. So you could actually start the computer, and if you decide you're doing some development in this course, you could just come over to here, go into services, and click on start. And that would start it for that particular session. But in my case, I'm happy to have this run automatically. I've got enough resources, so I'm going to click on automatic. So that every time I reboot the computer, my SQL is available for me. All right, so we've confirmed that's running OK. So close that down. And actually, just quickly, and back into services again. The other thing was if for some reason, you probably uh, would figure this out anyway, but uh, for some reason it wasn't running, you could just click on start to make sure that it was started or stop and start or there's a restart option as well. You could try one of those if you had some difficulty starting it up for whatever reason, but uh, generally the installation should work for most people. All right, getting back now to the MySQL workbench that started automatically once MySQL was installed. I want to start by clicking on this local instance, so click on that. And that brings up this little screen and it's asking for the root username. So I'm going to type in that root username that I assigned earlier in the video. And I'm going to choose not to save it. You could choose save the password if you like, but uh, for security reasons I prefer not to do that. Click on OK. And this has opened up, which is a good sign that uh, we got the password correct. If we come over here and click on service status, that gives us a bit of an overview. The fact that it's actually running, as you can see here, Number of connections, well all of this is, uh, we have actually got some connections because of the installation and a bit of traffic and the, all these efficiency things and bits and pieces. But uh, obviously there won't be a lot happening at the moment and that's because uh, we haven't really started using it yet. But bearing in mind that uh, we are actually opening the database because we've used MySQL to actually do that, in case you're wondering where the connections are actually coming from. Now we can come over here and click on Users and Privileges. And that will confirm the list of users. So you can see there that uh, we had the root account, which was automa automatically created for us, and also the dev user account that uh, we created. All right, so click on uh, View now from the View menu and select Home. We'll go back to where we were. Now we're going to come over here and click on this little wrench to the right of the plus sign, which is for managing connections. And that should open up this uh, little screen here, as you can see. And to the left there, we've got uh, this uh, Manage Server Connections. So I'm going to click on this local instance MySQL 57 and we're going to click on test connection. Now it's going to want that password, that root password again, so I'm going to type that in. And you can see there we've successfully made the MySQL connection, so that tells us that uh, MySQL is working correctly and we're able to connect to the database. And that obviously is going to serve as well in a future video when we start uh, using MySQL. So that's OK. I'm going to click on close. Right now, let's click on the plus this time. We're going to add a new connection. We're going to add a new connection for what we're going to be using in this course. So click on plus, and the connection name. I'm just going to call it development, but you can call it literally whatever you like. And we're going to change the username instead of root. We're going to change that to the username we created, which was dev user. So I'm going to click on test connection. Then I'm going to enter the user the password rather for this particular username that we've set up. Remembering that this isn't the root user, this is the other user. Okay, click on OK. And you can see we made a successful connection, so that tells us that uh, the username and uh, password are valid, and we're good to go. So click on OK. Then importantly, click on OK to add that user. And we've now got this second connection configured under the MySQL connections, and we're going to be able to use that in the course. All right, so I'm going to finish the video here now. We're actually done. Uh, in the next video, as I mentioned at the start, it's actually a video for Mac users. So if you've just installed this on Windows and you haven't got a Mac and or a Linux machine, you can skip the next one or two videos and move on to the video.